Hey, welcome back to the shop. I got my buddy Phil here. Phil's helped me on several projects like the Wilton bandsaw build and other unique projects here and there. Anyway, we have something special for you today and we wanted to share it with you. Phil, why don't you tell us what we got here? Uh, a headache. <laughs> so, we've done a lot of weird builds in the past. Uh, this probably being one of the more of the unique ones. Uh, a friend of mine is an aviation enthusiast and uh, came across a prop from an airplane in a junkyard and wants it refurbished so it could be displayed. Uh, I don't think our skill set would be up to a uh, full restoration. Uh, full restoration. No. no. And uh, I wouldn't fly anything that uh, we fixed. That I touched. Yeah. <laughs> Not, doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah. But uh, so through a little research, this came off a uh, radial engine out of a junkyard, which uh, was an LC-126, and that was the Army's fancy name for a Cessna 190. Um, saw a lot of service in the from late 40s, 47, all the way probably to the early 60s. Came out of Army service mid 50s. But it was basically a transport plane used as a field ambulance. Uh, the, the National Park Service and, res and Forest Service trees used it a lot in search and rescue efforts. Uh, kind of a workhorse plane. But uh, in typical Army fashion, when they were looking for planes at that time, they, the plane had already existed in the civilian world, and they said, well, that meets our criteria, and they took it. Um, I wish this thing could talk, but how we found it was it was in a junkyard, and we live in the Central Valley of California. I have a sneaking suspicion that after these planes were decommissioned, it was probably bought by a farmer who used the engines on a stand and used it for an ag purpose, as in to, like a warmer, to keep oranges from freezing or to keep um, air circulating through a vineyard or yeah. who knows. Um, you don't see that a lot anymore, having a giant rotary engine and a swinging giant blade at ground level doesn't seem real safe and OSHA Dude, This thing's probably... a little over eight feet. Yeah, wow. th this thing will kill you. <laughs> so I can see OSHA frowning on it and uh, it's probably been sitting in a junkyard since the 60s. Uh, you would be surprised on how well it actually held up uh, lead paint impervious. Yeah. Um, the paint that's on this is still so good that you could shine it up to showroom qualities. Yeah. But an uh, aircraft grade steel prop, which is weird because I've never seen steel, it's always been aluminum. Um, but then you start, right, uh, the coupling in the middle is steel, but it's some type of steel alloy. It doesn't hold a magnet nearly as strong as the blades. Mm -hmm. um, blades are quite flexible for steel. Yeah. It's, a, it's a mild steel. Um, we have a little repair on the tips. Yeah, I have to clean that up a little bit, maybe round it out for safety reasons. If yeah. you're going to have this display, you don't want to walk into the corner in the middle of the night. Yeah, you don't want to splay somebody over Yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's going to be a fun project, and it doesn't look like it's going to be that hard to get into. It's, yeah, I think we're going to media blast the knuckle, or whatever this coupler is called. Yeah, the coupling. Um, yeah, the coupling, and then we're going to remove the blades, and uh, I'm going to try that scotch Bright. Uh, yeah. grinding pad. Uh, less intrusive, see if it cuts through this epoxy paint or whatever it is. Um, it's definitely going to take care of the rust and then we'll see what kind of finish we can get. Yeah, very no pity. Um, kind of some surface flash rust. I'm really surprised. I noticed how shiny the steel is, that end that you cleaned up there. Yeah, um, I've seen most people polish these out for display pieces and where it's almost a chrome finish. To me, I think, you know, to each yeah. their own, but to me I want it painted in the original Colors, yellow tips. Yeah, uh, yeah this he wants, game, Yeah, he wants the tips done, uh, different color than the yeah, blade. Yeah, yellow tips, black blades, and then uh, you know gunmetal. The gunmetal gray center. Um, this is actually off the Army uh, LC one twenty six. I still had the data plate on the engine. So it is an Army. It right. Was so Army. I'm going to try to keep it as close to the original military configuration as I could, which we all know is kind of a no thrills. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't don't look at me on the ground. Don't see me in the sky. Yeah, so exactly. we'll, we'll do that. But uh, other all right, than enough chit chat. Let's yeah. bust this thing apart and yeah, get to work, brother. You have a tetanus shot, right? Oh uh, hell yeah! Mm. You know you know us. All right, good luck. <laughs> lock jaw for everybody. All right, let's dig into it. All right, step one. Let's get it apart. We've already marked the uh, indicators for the timing of the blade, so we'll always be able to put it back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. And now would be. Ooh, oh, that, that happened. Nice. So 
So that's the inside. As you can see, it's a uh, flange held, which is a uh, uh, and the spline. Look at the look at the size of that spline. That's got to be yeah. Geez, this that's a two inch spline. Yeah, this engine only had three hundred horsepower, but uh, that's still pretty. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And when we re you know during the restoration, you're going to want to try to keep as much of these numbers and stamps and oh yeah proof yeah. That's why we're going to media blast it. We're we'll, we'll glass we'll glass beat it. Besides the coupling holding it together and the recesses that Mary did this flange on the blade, um, this thing was pretty well rusted in place. But uh, for the amount of rust that's on it, oh, very little keyed. They are yeah, keyed. Very little damage to the inside. There's no real serious pitting or cracks or anything. Well, let's get it in the media blaster. Yeah, one of your favorite things to do. When in doubt, blast it out. That's right. I mean, I'm doing things I don't really need to do on the inside. That's okay. But I want it to marry up real good. Yeah. And I, we, yeah. Once we paint it, it's going to thicken it. You know what I mean? Cleaned up nicely. Serial number AC42-7921. 41 Delta 59226. Still good. Show yeah. it up close, Bill. Show it up close. That's pretty bitching. Yeah. Where are the numbers? Uh, right here across the back. Pretty cool. Right down the Look side. at that. Yeah, I wonder if I could call Cessna and ask him if they still have any records on this. I bet they would. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, or they'd ask me where we got it. Yeah. I'd rather not say. Yeah. No comment. So, working on one blade, we've gone at it with Scotch Brite, some sanding pads, and uh, this paint is an epoxy base, and it is not for the faint of heart. What are we using here, Phil? What well, is that? This is Aircraft Paint Remover. Uh, this, we bought this at a local auto parts store, and it's supposed to strip paint, but I think this is supposed to strip that modern snowflake paint. Yeah, yeah. Not that lead-infused epoxy, Imran. yeah, cancer-causing 1950s paint. Well, let's see, That man. is superior than any other paint in the market. Well, it being 100 degrees right now might help. Yeah, so we're going to see if this uh, puts a dent in it before we take the uh, wheels to it. But, you think uh, you might want some gloves or something? I've never started wearing safety equipment, and I'm not going to start now. You're so. going to die, man. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see the stars at night in California, so yeah. <laughs> I'm not real worried about what's coming out of this can. The instruction said 45 minutes, but look at this, Bill. It's turning into like an ash almost. Huh. Look at that. Yeah, better living through chemistry. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Let's give it the let's give it the uh, Stone Age rock test. Oh yeah. Still kind of gummy, huh? Yeah. 
Should we put more on or wait? Well, I'm a big fan of uh, scrape this and then. Well, I'm a big fan of doing things in excess, so yeah, we'll give it another coat. All right. <laughs> Bare metal. No kidding. Yeah. For once, something does what it says it does. Well, I'm lying to you. It took the paint off. Oh, that's, that's primer, dude. Primer, which is uh, a lot easier to take off than w watching this epoxy gum up in the wheel. Uh, I'm pretty impressed for once a, uh, a chemical does what it says it's advertised to do. Non-methylene chloride. Yeah. For our next project, we should do that flex seal boat. Yeah. yeah. I got a screen. Yeah. I know where there's a pool. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You told me you hate water. I do. I will not be getting in any water anytime soon. That's funny coming from a guy that fought battles in the water. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Let's give it another shot. Here's the second application, and it's it's got, it looks like it's taking the primer this time in a couple spots. So we've sandblasted the uh, couplings. For no, the bead blasted or bead Actually, blasted. we use garnet number eighty. Okay, garnet number eighty for you got to get super technical. <laughs> but we shot a bunch of sand-like material through a high-pressure nozzle, like. Glass like yeah. sand material. <laughs> and uh, it did a pretty good job of evening out the finish. Yeah, it and did. Uh, then that. we went and we covered it in a single stage etching primer, which I'm probably butchering the name. It's either Marhide or Marehide um, 5111. So, out of all the primers we've used in the past, that this shit seems, kicks yeah, ass. For yeah. $45 a can, uh, you really do see an in product finish. Yeah. Um, the cheaper $7 cans, they, they're, they don't. Flash dries quick. You get some runs. Um, let me get a let me get a tight shot but shot yeah. of the the finish on that. It looks far fantastic. Far superior product. So if there's anybody out there watching from the uh, My Heart or My Hide Marhide company, feel free to send us stuff. Because, yeah, uh, we'll I'll, use the hell out of yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do a product review for you. <laughs> and then for a finishing product on this, uh, I was gonna kind of go fancy. Um, you can't tell I've graduated from the Rust-Oleum School of Paint. Yeah. Um, I'm a rattle can man, always have been, always will be. But for this finishing product on the coupling, we're going to go with a hammered finish, which is kind of a metallic, uh, black, crinkly finish. Uh, probably not true to the original, but, I mean, it's the closest thing to silver. I mean, you're going to hang it in your house. You don't want a piece, you know, a piece of equipment hanging there. You kind of want something that the wife might look at and go, yeah, it's... It's got, a, it's got some charm. Yeah. So we'll finish off with some Rustoleum hammered finish. Um, I think we've used this several things already. Oh yeah, we did a lot of stuff with that that and, one. Uh, yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, I'm not the best painter in the world, but yeah. Let me get a tight shot of those parts before you lay anything on it. Go for it. That's uh, one coat of that primer, Phil. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a nice surface right there. Hey Ray, with a hammered finish, how many coats do you usually go? After you get a nice base coat on there, if you really want that hammered finish, then you got to lay it on a little better. So let let that base coat uh, harden up a little bit, and then we'll go back over, and then you'll get that that hammer tone finish. You, you start, you can actually start to see it come out a little bit. Yeah. But you know, it's it's 100 degrees right now in the sun, so this stuff's baking on there. On a windless day, yeah. now the wind picks up. Never fails. Hell, I wonder if I can get it to rain. Yeah, do your rain dance. You want to wash my car? <laughs> yeah. Your once a year washing. Yeah, we'll wax my truck and see what happens. <laughs> You know, a lot has to do with this finish from that primer. That primer is really good primer. 
Yeah, see, you're starting to see your hammer toe. Yeah. Yeah, back off. Let it let it uh, harden up. Let it flash off a little bit. Hey, thanks for painting my buckets, Phil. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So we've decided to do the clamp bands that hold the coupling together in the same black shiny enamel that we're going to do the, the prop blades. Um, I'm, well, pretty good at color coordinating after I graduated from the uh, Rattle Can School of Art. But uh, I'm working with this engine enamel and this stuff to me has always been a curse. It runs constantly. So I'm going to go very sparingly, very far away light mist and see what I can um, we're kind of on a budget restraint here when it comes to paint we got two cans of this black to finish off this prop so let's see what happens that stuff smells nothing like the other stuff no I can literally feel the cancer is that the same stuff you paint your firearms with uh, I've, I've painted some uh, receivers of firearms with this stuff, and it turns out pretty good. Yeah, and explain why you use that and not high dollar cer uh, coat and stuff like that. Because uh, I treat weapons like tools. <laughs> I'll drag them around in the dirt, they get beat up. And plus, wherever you're at, you could always change yeah. the scenery to ma or the color to match the scenery that you're in. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that, like, if you get a scratch, grab some more paint. Yeah, there you uh, go. I'm not a big Cerakote uh, or Duracote or any of them fancy coatings. Um, if it don't come in a can that rattles, I'm not interested. Like I said, I got more things to spend money on than making things look nice. I need them to work. Except this. This is going to look nice. Yeah, but this isn't mine. Oh. <laughs> this is... <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody, somebody wants something nice, and uh, I, I think he's telling, taking a hell of a gamble on having me do it. But uh, ooh, 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 gotta get that undercarriage. And I think we're gonna use the center coupling. That's yellow, right? Yeah. First disclaimer: We're not experts of aviation. I have flown zero times in my life. Flown on an aircraft, never piloted one, never worked on one, never turned a wrench on one. So we're using stuff out of a junkyard that we found with like bags of parts. So I could be putting this together completely backwards. I have no idea. But it's just supposed to hang in a house and look nice. So if somebody's out there and you're like, you know that Cessna 190 is an inverted prop. And you need to turn that nut, you know, 40 degrees counterclockwise. I don't care. None of us know. So <laughs> you can laugh at us in the comments. Knock yourself out. But as far, disclaimer, this isn't going on a plane. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Damn but Phil. this thing. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So this piece here is this, like a center nut. It locks onto the, spin, the spine shaft that would go through the prop. Um, the original color as I was blasting it was yellow. So just, you know, for prosperity, nostalgia yeah, purposes. nostalgia purposes, we're just gonna keep it yellow. But uh, these turned out pretty good. Hey, tell me what you think of my paint booth here. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> if you haven't noticed, this is the Ozark style paint booth. <laughs> It's a camera tripod, turn 90 degrees at the neck, and then we use a piece of pipe to run across. Hey, that's DOM, I'll have you know. know. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> professionally anchored by gravity onto a wooden post. So a stiff breeze, it all goes down. The good news is, is the, it, 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 there's a sense of danger. It makes, coming to, it makes you know, doing a project that much more exciting, that it all can go bad with just one puff of air. Yeah. We'll find out. All right, Johnny Danger, let's get on that prop. <laughs> That's looking good, man. That's looking real good. I like that color. That's one of my favorite colors. It's got like that nice machine look to it. Yeah. I thought it'd be more crinkly. No, it, it came out perfect. Well, you know what it is? The sun's just baking that stuff in, you know, and floating it out. Yeah. I, I, I like the way it looks I like that. Too. So for the yellow, we've gone with the Krylon Rust Tough Enamel. Um, everything else has been a, so much of a rust -oleum type of day. That's not baby shit yellow, I hope. No, no, this is the aviation yellow. Oh, our, oh. Our, yeah. Par for, for the course right there. For general purposes right now. Yeah, if anybody asks, um, aviation yellow is a very specific type of yellow. It can be seen at high speeds. I, I'm making all this up, but it sounds legit. Sounds aeronautical. Yeah. 
that work? Oh shit, that is some yellow. Yeah, that is some yellow. Yeah, this is gonna take a couple coats. And uh once Oh, again, let it flash off. Yeah, once again, a credit to that primer. You can really see the paint adhere to it. Yeah, yeah. it digs in real well. Um, the $7 primer, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with $7 primer, depending on what job you're doing. Um, but if for something that you really want the paint to stick to, hold up to, and give it like a very even coat, you got it. It's all on the prep, it's all in your prep. Yep. And uh, one thing I've learned as I eat paint, um, when we do these weird projects for old stuff, we refurbished an old U.S. Army bed. Yeah, what year was that? 1952. And we found it in the mud. Yeah, um, that was a really cool project. When we refurbish these old things, you can kind of start to lose their historic feel to them in the refurbishment. So, like, if you try to, like, this has some dings and scratches and, and gouges in the metal. And I could probably take those to the wheel and get them out or, you know, blast them out. But you lose a lot of character. So sometimes leaving a scar makes the part more interesting. Yeah. So just food for thought. If you're sitting out there and you're going to take on a project from something you found in a scrapyard. Well, the uh, bunk, didn't we leave the original yeah. U.S.? Uh, yeah, we, we, we left the original data stamp. Like, and yeah. we left a wad of chewing gum. That's that true. Somebody yeah. had stuck under the frame of the bed. Uh, I forgot so about that. Yeah. Just, I mean, think about it. A USGI's gum is still there from 1950. Who knows? It was 40-something, wasn't it? No, 52. Oh, 52? Uh, yeah, it was a Korean War Korean, era. yeah. But... Yeah, so just food for thought. Sometimes less is more. All right, so we hosed off the acid, and uh, it's water supposed to neutralize it. It took one side down pretty much to the primer. I think it has something to do with how long you let it sit. And the other side, pretty much about the same. This side, I think we came out on top because uh, this was a little bit more bare metal, so it'd be a little less to have to polish off. But uh, we're gonna find out if this was worth it in uh, saving us some time of running the wheel over. Yeah, compared to just grinding it off. Yeah. All right, let's so get it. We'll find out. So instead of just running into the uh, Scotch Brite, um, we're gonna first wire wheel it to see if we can pull as much of this uh, gummy paint primer off because we don't want to gum up the uh, Scotch Brite pad wheel. So we're gonna run a wire wheel and see where this takes us. Doesn't look like it's touching it, huh? Yeah, in my opinion, not worth it at all. Next time, leave it dry, go straight to grinding it off. All right, grinder Phil, let's go back to the grinder. <laughs> wind picks up. Yeah, well, once again it's primer time. So this is the first prop we did. We stripped off pretty much as much as we can before you start moving It was in. more pitted than I thought. Yeah. You know? But the primer will kind of fill in. Uh, not totally but yeah. it fill in a lot of those pits and then on top yeah. of the primer you start going to that heavy enamel paint. Yeah you didn't want to do Bondo. Yeah. So. Like, I, like I said sometimes less is more. I, I still want yeah. it to show its age. Well it's going to show the it's definitely going to show the battle wounds. Yeah. So, the last prop's been sanded down and then buffed out. We got the uh, last of the primer on it. And surprisingly enough, we're still on one can of the uh, black engine enamel paint. So once we paint this, uh, now it's just literally sitting around watching paint dry before reassembly. So let's get the paint on this one and then uh, go have something to drink. One of the uh, benefits to uh, working in the beginning of August in the Central Valley is 
it's retarded hot. I'm pretty sure that we're swimming in skin cancer. <laughs> but uh, the good news is the minute paint literally hits the, the part that's been sitting in the sun, it dries almost on contact, which kind of uh, helps a lot with your can control. Yeah, but you Phil, is it Iraq hot? No. <laughs> you, don't run into, uh, you don't run into runs in the paint. Everything kind of goes on nice and even. Yeah, it floats out real nice, huh? Yeah. I can't believe this one can's gone this far. I'm thinking what we'll do is um, after these both flash off, we'll give it a nice wet coat. Yeah, big heavy one. Yeah. So once again, we've gone above and beyond our planned project, and we realize that this thing's going to need a nose cap. Nothing authentic, just something to kind of round it out and clean it up. So we uh, glued together some laminate wood and uh, bring that up here, Ray. And yeah, there you go. Glued it together, built a drill mount for it, and then our plan is to spin grind it on a belt grinder <laughs> until we get the desired shape. So the mess we're making is biblical at best. So, we'll let you know how this turns out. Okay, so paint's dry. Um, Anytime you're working with enamel paint, best to let it dry overnight. It dries a little bit slower than other types of paint. Um, but it's it, probably because it's a lot thicker and has a lot more chemical in it. After the, we let everything dry, we put everything back together uh, loosely. We haven't had, added any clamps or anything. Um, enamel on enamel, when you're dealing with tight tolerances, it sticks. Yeah, it, sticks. it almost like self-glues itself. But we reclocked the blades back to as close to the original markings as where we had them originally. When we got this, we didn't, it came with loose components. Um, like this collar and bearing setup, this would have been used to clamp the engine, or clamp to the, the spindle on the engine. The, uh, the crankshaft. Yeah, the crankshaft. I, we don't have that, so this looks neat, but there's really no use for it. And it can't go on. And it can't go on. And I don't feel like machining a shaft. Yeah. So. We have the clamps that hold the prop blades to the yoke. Is this the back side? This would be the front of the prop. That's the front? Yeah, this is the front of the prop. Okay. So, the, we're going to clamp these on. We do not know which directions they go. We, common sense would tell us that the safety bolts would go to the rear of the prop. So we're going to stagger them stagger and then safety the wire yeah. in the rear. It right. seems like it would be the most aerodynamic you know what I mean? Right, Common sense right. thing to do. Um, these are spring steel, spring and steel, there yeah. are you're not you're not gonna gorilla this one. Yeah, so so we had to build up. we had to build a spreader. So this will go through here, two nuts. We'll screw them apart. That'll yeah. open up. We'll slide it over we'll the show it rock. It. But yeah, we'll take you along on that little bit. But for the most part, it's time to uh, time to reassemble. Put and uh, because Ray has. Some OCD issues. He we, he went above and beyond, and uh, we've created a nose cone from that, pictures that we think's close. Yeah. Um, what's this made out of? That is a MDF, okay. medium density fiberboard. Yeah. Um, there was an old project that kind of went by the wayside. We had some yeah. pucks. Ray got creative, glued these together, sanded them down into a cone, and then used a piece of scrap aluminum that it was turned down into a kind of a nose plug. To screw will. it down onto the... But uh, I think it, it marries up pretty nice and uh, it's a great little accent piece. It just really high, makes it look more aerodynamic and kind of hides it away. It, it, it'll please the wife. Less machinery, more more feng shui. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can hear mine yelling at me now. I want it in the house. Yeah. But yeah, if he wants this counter sunk down more, I can machine this so it sits down nah, it'd be in there more. Yeah, the we're gonna have to figure out how to run a bolt through the back, put a backing plate, and then yeah, mount this. But we'll see. Let's get let's get it banded back together first. All right, 
little finesse, try not to scratch anything, take it up. So this right. one, you hold that and I'll get, get our spreader rig in because it's not going to slip over that, right? No. Yeah, you'll have to spread it and then we'll have to stagger it too for the next one. If somebody would have told you like two days ago that you'd be rebuilding a World War II, uh, I would have said no, I won't. Post World War II uh, airplane prop, I would have said they were crazy. There we go. Before we did finish this whole project, I want to weigh this thing. <laughs> I don't have no way to weigh it. It's about a hundred pounds or more. I'm leaning towards like 85, 90 pounds. Okay, <clears throat> so then, yep, the head of the bolt goes here. this. Okay, ready? Yep. Did you get this? Uh, yeah, we're about there. Okay, so from here Hang on to it. Yep, that looks good. So how do I get this through there? Well we went we went too long with the wire so I gotta cut it right here. Okay. Do we have to hold the wire somewhere like that here? Uh, okay. Just well, we need a Y, so just uh, unlock the unlock the tool. Pull them together. Okay. Cut this. Uh, how much do we want? Yeah, cut it right there. Squeeze them tight. Okay, here we go. Pretty good. Yeah. All right, and that's, that's good. As tight as that's getting. There we go, and then. All right, Phil. Let's wrap this up. I think it looks pretty good for a, a mock-up house decoration 100 pound man. Yeah. <laughs> we even have it safety wired so his nuts don't fall off. Yeah, good point. <laughs> You're gonna need it when his wife knocks this thing over or back me. You know what? I'll bet you this is hundred plus pounds. Yeah. It's over eight feet in length. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's gotta be close to hundred pounds. I know this guy's got a big ass house, so who knows? Let's hope he doesn't turn it into a ceiling fan. Yeah. Well, it was a fun project. Yeah, good job, Phil. Oh, hey, appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem.
For strangely enough, it didn't take as much work as we thought it was going to take. It was all like most of the time was work. prep, yeah. prep and finish, and a little tiny bit of machining. Got to add machining and everything. Yeah, a little bit of imagination. Yeah. yeah, if he wants this counter sunk down, that's an easy fix. But um, if you look at the original one, it is set off for some reason. I think and I don't know if it has something to do with airflow or something. Yeah, you know, for our next project, though, I'm going to bring in a submarine hatch. There you go. Because that uh, only weighs four thousand and a half pounds. We'll figure it out. Yeah. But, no, it was a good project. All right, bro. Let's wrap it up and deliver it. Thanks for watching. Yep. See you.